Dick. Nice of you to drop in. Hi, Kath. Where's John? He left about 15 minutes ago. Left? Isn't he coming back? I don't know. He didn't say. Why? That's strange. He asked me to stop by at 8. Said he had something very important to discuss with me. Well, maybe he intends coming back and forgot to mention it. But he made such a point of my... <laughs> well, what's so funny? I see you still don't know how to tie a proper knot. <laughs> Don't let me interrupt. I'm just the husband. Interrupt what? What's been going on behind my back all these years? John, you're not serious. Why don't you tell me that you were only straightening his tie? That's the usual alibi, isn't it? What are you getting at? You think you're pretty clever, don't you? The rising young man, shining light of the bar, good looking, ambitious. I'm only in your way. But you haven't pushed me aside yet. In court or in my house, get out. You're wrong about a lot of things. I told you to get out. Please go, Dick. But Kath, I... Please. You're wrong, John. Very wrong. Dick is a good friend to us both. Don't you remember that we promised if there were ever somebody else that would tell each other? I haven't forgotten that promise. Please believe in me, John. I must have been out of my mind. Kath, I, I was all mixed up. I don't know. Can you forgive me? Of course, dear. You've just been working too hard. I'll try to find Dick tomorrow and patch things up. Kath, I'll make it up to you. I promise I will. From that moment on, he was sweeter to me than he'd ever been. No more jealousies, accusations, or suspicions. Like a second honeymoon. It was wonderful. It must have been. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mullen. Is that all? Is there more? Good day. Good day. Well, what are you waiting for? I wonder. Get San Quentin. Tell them I want any x-rays they got of Bailey's leg. Bailey's leg? What's the gag? I want to see what it looked like after it healed. Why? Before I arrest anybody for the murder of John Morlan, I want to be sure it was Morlan who was murdered, not Red Bailey. I don't get it. Look, either Mrs. Morlan just lied, or Morlan lied in this diary. If he lied, why did he? I'll bite why. I don't know yet. I don't know that he lied. But if he did, and was insanely jealous enough to want to kill his wife, he might try to frame her for his own murder. Substituting somebody else's body to take his place. Bailey? Could be. That's what I want to find out. You can see the irregularity of the tibia and fibula where the fractures occurred. Bailey's leg is healed, but those marks and callus formations remain forever. Here's the picture you wanted of Moreland's leg. Aye. If it is Moreland's leg... Well, we'll soon find out. They don't match. Mm-hmm. That settles it. Hello? Oh, yes, he is. It's for you, Lieutenant. Hello? Yes, Lee. They did? What caliber? Fine. I'll be right over. This is all there was in the bedroom. Anything else? No, that's everything. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Hiya, Sugar. Remember me? Whom did you wish to see, please? Mrs. Morland. She's in the living room. Morning, Miss Morland. Mr. Conroy, going somewhere? As a matter of fact, we were just leaving. Going far? I'm driving Mrs. Morland up to Arrowhead. She's been through quite a lot. I thought it'd be better if she got away for a little while. Well, I hate to interfere with your plans. 
But have you ever seen this before? Yes, that's my gun. Where did you get it? A fire warden just found it, about a hundred yards from where your husband's car went off the road. I just missed it a few days ago. I wondered what had happened to it. And you no idea how it got to the scene of your husband's death? Of course not. What about it? Just that the bullet that killed him was fired from your gun. I'm sorry, Mrs. Morland, but I'll have to ask you to come with me. Does this mean you're placing her under arrest? I'm afraid it does. That won't be necessary. I'll vouch for Mrs. Morland's appearance when she's needed. Mr. Conroy, I feel that you're prejudiced in this case. Do you really believe you have enough evidence to get an indictment? I think I have. Please, Dick, I don't want you to become involved. All right, Lieutenant. Two sensational developments arose in the Moreland murder case when police arrested Mrs. Catherine Moreland, charging her with the slaying of her husband, followed promptly by the resignation from office of District Attorney Conroy, close friend of the accused, as well as of the late John Moreland. An explanation was not forthcoming, but an early statement is promised. Turning from crime to politics, in the municipal... So McMullen finally arrested her. She hasn't been indicted yet. No, but she soon will be. Well... I'd better get back to the office before too many people begin to wonder where I am. Will you call me later? You know I will. Hello? Red? What happened to you? Where have you been? Never mind that. I want to see you. I got a little package I want you to keep for a few days. How's the weather up there? Clear. Good. See you tonight. Your place, 8 o'clock. OK, Red. See you at 8. Bye. some breath. What's the matter with you? Something wrong? No. Everything's all right. You look sick. What gives? Nothing. Nothing at all. What are you scared about? I'm not scared. It's just that. Good evening, Mr. O'Neill. Okay, Red, drop it. I hate to spoil the fun, but if anybody does any shooting around here, it'll be us. It's your coat, Marion. We'll all take a nice little ride. We don't seem to be getting anywhere, Marion. Let's start all over again, from the beginning. I've already told you I don't know a thing. It was all Jim's, Mr. O'Neill's idea. Killing Daly or Morland? Or both? I don't know. I don't know anything. If Jim killed him, I had nothing to do with it. Did Bailey? I've told you I don't know. Honest, I don't. Jim's been awfully nice to me, and he was afraid if Bailey found out, he'd be jealous. What about Morland? All I know is Jim had a fight with him over money. What money? I don't know. I wasn't there. Where? Wherever it happened. Jim didn't tell me much about it. When was this? Just before Mr. Morland was killed. Exactly what did O'Neill tell you? I don't remember exactly. All right, Marion, we'll give you a chance to refresh your memory. Send in O'Neill. Take her outside. It'll be a pleasure. This way, Miss Gordon. Have a chair, Mr. O'Neill. Thank you. Would you mind telling me what you were doing at Marion Gordon's apartment tonight? Miss Gordon and I are friends. Is that why you were about to take a pot shot at her? Uh, not at her. 
at Bailey. You see, I happened to drop in on Miss Gordon tonight to discuss some business. I left the room for a moment, and while I was out, Bailey showed up. He started to threaten Miss Gordon. I knew that the only language that he would understand would be a gun. Fortunately, you arrived just in time to make any action on my part unnecessary. Do you always carry a gun on your uh, social calls? It makes me feel that much safer at night. There have been so many holdups. You're right. It's always best to play safe, isn't it? What does Red Bailey have on you anyway? It's not just Marion Gordon, is it? Or doesn't Bailey know you've been two-timing him? I don't know what you're talking about. You tried to knock over Bailey before he could knock you off. Why? Was it over Marion Gordon or Moreland? Moreland had nothing to do with it. No? Marion tells me that you and Moreland had a quarrel over money. You took from the firm. You don't think I killed him, do you? Didn't you? Of course not. Not to change the subject, you recall a telephone conversation Miss Gordon had with Bailey this afternoon? I thought phone tapping was illegal. It is. But there's no law against dictaphones. We've had Marion Gordon covered since the night we discovered who she was. All right. Bailey called and said he was coming to see her. I knew he was wanted for murder, so I told her I'd be there. Why didn't you call me? Didn't you think I'd be interested? I was going to, after I got Bailey out of Miss Gordon's apartment. I didn't want her exposed to that kind of publicity. I see. That's a pretty good story, Mr. O'Neill. But I think you skipped some of the most interesting details. What are you driving at? You needed money to cover your embezzlement. You knew Red Bailey wanted Marion to keep a package for him. And you figured that package was the money he had stolen from the Ventura Bank. You were going to kill him, hide the money, and then call the police. That's also a pretty good story, Lieutenant. But I don't think you can prove it. I think you're right. Good night. Send in Red Bailey. Just a moment. You forgot your matches. It's a tough rap, Bailey. I don't think you can beat it. Why did you kill him? You know we'll hang you anyway on that Ventura job. So what do you got to lose? Why did you kill Marlin? I didn't. No? No. What did you do? How much do you know? You were at Morland's Lodge. He brought me there. Why? To hide out for a couple of days until he got things fixed. And the next day he called and said everything was okay, that he was coming to pick me up. And I phoned Marion to tell her. In the middle of the conversation, I heard a car pull up.
way to get yourself shot. What was Willis doing here? Was that the guy who just left? Yes. He's the caretaker. I saw his car out front, so I drove on down the road and walked back. Did he see you? I'm smarter than that. He wouldn't have left here if he had. Who are you calling? My girl. This joint's getting too hot. That guy Willis is liable to walk in while I'm sleeping. You won't have to worry about that. What's the idea? Sorry, Red. This is the way it has to be. I don't get it. Why? I just happened to find it necessary. And that's the way I left him, so help me. On his living room floor. I never saw him again. And you didn't put him in his car with a bullet in him for good measure? And run him off the cliff so that it looked like an accident? I tell you, I didn't. Try telling it to the grand jury. Find him a nice, quiet cell. I don't want him to be disturbed. Is Marion Gordon still out there? Yes, sir. But Mr. Conroy's here and wants to see you right away. Well, send him in. And I want Mrs. Morland, too. Yes, sir. Hello, Jerry. Oh, Mr. Conroy, anything I can do for you? Habeas corpus, huh? I could have saved you the trouble. I was just about to release her. You mean you have the murderer? Maybe. Who? Well, you read about it in the newspapers. And you might forget you gave me this. Thanks, Jerry. Come in. Cat, it's all right. I'm here to take you home. That's right, Mrs. Morland. I'm sorry for what's happened. And I want to apologize for any inconvenience or disturbance I caused you. But you understand, I... I understand. It's quite all right. May I go now? Certainly. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Bye. Bye, Jerry. Bye, Mr. Conroy. Well, that's that. You can tell Marion Gordon to go home now. Tell her. I'll take her. No, you won't. You stay right here. Oh, look, Jerry, I'm tired. This has been a tough case. I want to forget it. Forget it. It's just getting interesting. Pretty slow. Hey, did you hear the latest news? Did you see what happened? What? Just what I said would happen. They released Mrs. Marlin. I can't see why they arrested her in the first place. A nice looking doll like that, why she wouldn't murder nobody. I don't care what they had on her. You can take a look at her and see if it's not the type. Think so? This is my flop. Your what? My flop, my shelter, my home. While I don't wish to appear inhospitable, blow. Ah, never mind, wait. You need the rest, and I need to remember the brotherhood of man. He's not a bad guy. As long as you're peaceable, he won't bother you. And nevertheless, uh, let's not tempt his move. Such stuff as dreams are made of.
Will you share a dream? Uh, don't be afraid. There are no bad dreams here. No nightmares of secret crimes, haunting guilt and pursuing justice. Yeah. Nothing but sweet dreams guaranteed of universal brotherhood and peace, of love and forgetfulness. Forgetfulness of the evil in the hearts of men and ourselves. Ah, go ahead and drink before I die of thirst. <sighs> Who loves not woman, wine, and song remains a fool his whole life long. All true. All but that reference to woman. It was a wiser man who said, Infamy, thy name is woman. I know. Do we need a better example? There's a woman who was released after a charge of murdering her husband. Why? Because she was innocent? No. Because she's a woman. Young, attractive. While he, poor soul, is... A week ago, he, he was just an ordinary man. Like... Like me. He, he was breathing. He was alive. He was enjoying life. He was drinking. lunch counter and get a cup of coffee. You're welcome to the flop. I'll come right back. Now look, Marion, let's not go over that again. It's been very nice, but it's over. Over? No, oh, no, it isn't. It's not going to be that easy. There's still a few things I can tell McMullen. Just because they've got read and released Mrs. Moreland doesn't mean that... I'm sorry, but I prefer not to discuss it over the phone. Now, suppose we postpone it until... We'll postpone nothing. If you won't talk over the phone, you can come over here. Then I'm coming to your place right now. Now, wait a minute. At your house at Topanga. I came up here on a hunch. And I was right. What's it about? John! 
What about John? I can't tell you over the phone, but can you come up here right away? No. Don't bring anyone. All right, Jim, I'll be right there. you didn't think I was dead. Not you, of all people. Then who was in the... Do you remember Willis? He used to do odd jobs for us when he was sober. I hated to do it, but... When Bailey left me in the lurch, someone had to play the part of John Morland's corpse. So good of Jim to bring you out here. Of course, I had to persuade him. But then... Well, I couldn't let him go and spoil my beautiful plan. You know, I had hoped to have the law do this for me, Catherine. But since it won't... There won't be any question of identification this time. I was listening in the hallway and I heard a bang. So then I crashed down the door and there was Red Bailey. He whirled on me with a gun in his hand, but I was too fast for him. I hit him with a right to the jaw and a left to the jaw and down he went. Where was Daddy? Well, well, well he, he was in the other room with Mr. O'Neill. What about that poison? Well, Morland planted that himself to build up a perfect case against Mrs. Morland. The trouble was, it was too perfect. And that's what made me suspicious. And then when I read the diary, I was positive he was still alive. Now all I had to do was figure out my next move. Is that why Daddy let her go on Havis' corpses? Well, 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 yes. And then when Dorothy phoned about Mrs. Morland going to their weekend house, I knew it was the payoff. We got the district attorney and rushed up there. Mrs. Morland's car was already in the driveway. We shrieked to a stop. Then a shot rang out. And another, and another. Without a moment's hesitation, I dashed inside I and I... get it! Oh. Thank you. 